Hey everybody, this is Christine DeGraff with another episode of TNT Bootcamp. Um, today I have a special um, co-host. I have Ben Fisher from Steady Demand. Hey Ben. Happy Monday everybody. How's everyone doing? I want to give a shout out to Ronnie Benzer who is in the audience. He was supposed to be on a plane today and wasn't going to be able to make it. So Ben decided, you know, I asked Ben to step in and he said yes. And then Ronnie's flight got canceled or something, so, but he said he'd stay in the audience. But well, we're going to have a good show today. I have a special guest. Um, before we do get to Daniel, I want to give a full disclosure that Steady Demand does um, do work for um, 34SP, um, and I work for Steady Demand. However, um, 34SP is not paid for this, um, you know, to be on this show, I just thought that Daniel would make a really good guest, and so I invited him here to tell you a little bit about WordPress. So, Ben, you've known Daniel for how many years? Uh, Daniel and I have known each other in the hosting industry for over 10 years. So we've seen each other at conferences, we've worked together before, and I mean, I can personally attest that, uh, yeah, Daniel is an expert when it comes to WordPress. So that was one of the things that when we were talking about this was like, you know, you had just gone over and just done something about Blogger, and it's like, well, okay, well, hey, you know, got this guy over here. He knows a lot about WordPress, so why not? Absolutely. So that's why he's here. And without further ado, let's introduce Daniel Foster from 34SP, who, if this is his very first hangout, so hey, Daniel, how you doing today? I'm really good, thanks. You guys have to be nice because it is my first hangout and it's also the evening here because I'm in the UK. So uh, giving up my evening free of charge to come and talk to everyone, which is uh, really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. So can you give us a little bit of your background? Um, sure. I, uh, I, did a, um, I went to college and did a computer science degree uh, 15 or so years ago. Um, my friend Stuart and I uh, started 34SP.com right after that. Um, hosting was very, very different uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it's changed beyond all recognition. WordPress didn't exist for a start. Um, but we're, uh, we're still here, so we've got to be doing something, right? And so, you know, when it comes to being a UK, uh, a UK local company, right, offering WordPress, I mean, that's extremely niche. But you also serve a global audience as well, right? We do, absolutely. Uh, we have customers from all around the world from, uh, you know, I don't have the exact number, but 120 odd countries. Um, but WordPress is something like 25% of all the sites on the internet these days. So as much as it's a, a niche, it's the, the biggest niche going. So, uh, you know, we, we're, uh, we're serving that need that everyone has. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. I mean, WordPress being at least 25% of market share. Um, I think almost every single business owner has heard about WordPress. So let's go a little bit into talking about WordPress. And you know, when somebody's setting up WordPress for the first time, uh, many people get confused about you know whether they should choose like WordPress.com, which is you know of course free hosting, and WordPress.org, or uh, where they will still need a web uh, a web host, but they can also of course you know they can locally up uh, upload the plugin. I'm sorry, the the WordPress engine. So. Why would somebody pay for web hosting rather than choose, say, a free hosting platform? So WordPress.com is uh, is very useful. It uh, you know it hosts a huge amount of websites, um, but you you're fairly restricted if you want to use that. Uh, they say which plugins you can use, which themes you can use, and it doesn't offer the full flexibility that the WordPress platform really does offer. Um, if you go with a, a paid host, so someone like 34SP.com, you have the absolute flexibility that WordPress offers. Uh, you can have any theme you want, any plugin. Uh, if it's your kind of bag, you can really get into the nuts and bolts and, and change how WordPress is behaving. Uh, but really, it's just to give you all the flexibility that WordPress can offer. Yeah, that brings up a good, uh, good question, I guess. And that is, is that, <clears throat> so what are some things that people should be looking for when they're looking for a paid hosting provider? Well, you should be looking for the name. They should be called 34SP. No, you, you should <laughs> look cool and, and see how you get on with them. Um, you should, of course, look at the price. Um, but uh, do, do bear in mind that people who are offering it at absolute rock bottom prices, you know, there may be some, uh, some carry on from that about the level of service they're able to offer. Um, you should check out things like their backup strategy, 
uh, where their servers are based, if they own their own equipment. The same things that you would do hosting any site, uh, but obviously uh, WordPress specific, you could have a chat to their staff about WordPress. Uh, do they use it on their own sites? Um, do they run any blogs as a company? Uh, there's you know, all, all sorts of things that you, you could check out. OK. So. Uh, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Christine. OK. <laughs> well, many, many um, web hosting companies now offer the one-click install. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And so do you not even need to worry about you know, going to WordPress.org and downloading the engine with the one-click install? And is, this, is there ever a case where you wouldn't use the one-click install? Um, we, we offer a one-click install. Um, a lot of uh, hosts do. So if you have an account with us already, you, know, you log into your control panel. Uh, there's a nice big WordPress uh, logo. You click on it, and WordPress turns up on your site. Um, it is, in our case, certainly the full install from WordPress.org. It's the latest version, uh, so that will be ready. Honestly, uh, you know, for, for my own personal websites, I use the one-click install to do it. Uh, there's no need to go and download it yourself. You're getting the exact same thing. It just saves all the faffing around of setting up a database, uploading a load of files, all the things you normally have to do. Um, we actually even go a step beyond that. Uh, if you sign up to certain URLs, uh, 31st.com slash WordPress slash hosting, for instance, um, it'll be installed uh, when the account is ready, so it's kind of a zero-click install. Nice. Zero-click <laughs> install. I like that. Less work. Exactly. <laughs> Well, it just it keeps the, the latest version for people. Um, a lot of people know they're going to want WordPress installed when they use it. So why not say so at the point of purchase, and it, it'll be ready for people to use as soon as their hosting is ready. Absolutely. And so the one-click install, it's just the it installs the engine for you, um, just the basics, and then you're ready to get started with ins putting on a theme and installing plugins. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It'll be um, the the plain the plain install, the same as if you downloaded from WordPress.org. So it's got a couple of themes installed. The WordPress default ones, um, they're named after the years. So there's 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. Um, and uh, a couple of simple plugins. Uh, there's Hello Dolly, which splits the community. Some people love it, and some people hate it. Um, I have no feelings about it myself. Um, there's things like Akisma install, which is a, a great plugin. Uh, but yeah, it's just the, the default install, and from that point, people can install whatever else they want to, plugins and themes. Uh, they can have people write content for them, whatever they want to do from that. OK. And so um, go ahead, Kristen. <laughs> Sorry. So, so speaking of, so then they can go ahead and start installing. Um, I think that for a lot of new people, that's another point, uh, a pain point. You know, the first is, how do I even get started? So now say you've gone to a host, you've clicked the one click install. Now how do you choose a theme? What plugins do you use? And do you have any recommendations for that? Sure. Um, choosing a theme is it's a personal taste matter. Um, there are plenty of good sites to look at. Uh, you know, the WordPress plugins directory itself at WordPress.org slash plugins is, is a great place to start. Um, you'll be able to see hundreds, thousands of examples there. Um, if you want to maybe have something, this isn't to say those themes aren't professional. A lot of them are incredibly well done and very popular. Um, if you want uh, to go a bit beyond that, maybe there are uh, other sites like Theme Forest um, where you can go and choose, and some of those will be paid for themes, um, which sometimes brings a higher quality. But it, it's such a personal thing. Uh, you can just you, you can spend days and weeks even looking through themes to find one that suits, um, but. Uh, there's, there's something to be said for just picking one and going for it. You can always change it later on. Um, so find one that you like the look of, get up and running, install it, and then maybe go back and visit that later on and uh, see if there's one that you, you fancy a little bit more. You know, one thing I'll say when it comes to, to themes and plugins when it, with WordPress is that it's pretty important to check the compatibility with the server that you're going to be on. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're running PHP 5.4, and your plugin doesn't support that. You know, you might get Unicode issues or all a host of other issues. Um, same thing with themes. You know, you could also have a lot of uh, well, that could also cause some issues. Can you talk a little bit about compatibility and what people should look out for when they're choosing themes and plugins with their host? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's maybe not as big of an issue as it once was, but but you're absolutely right. It's something to to check out. Um, most hosts these days will be using uh, PHP 5.4. WordPress's requirement at the moment is for 5.2. Uh, so you'll generally find things are going to work okay. 
Um, if you do find some weird problems, the tech support guys at your host should be able to help you out with that. I know our guys deal with it every day. Um, but in general, it's going to work out OK. Um, these things, certainly if you're using the more popular plugins and themes, uh, they, they've been tested. People are using them across thousands on thousands of websites. So if, if an issue has come up, it's going to have come up already, and, and you'll be benefiting from the fact other people have seen what's uh, what's gone wrong with all that already. Yeah, and one thing I... Oh, go ahead. I have a question here from Susan Davis Cushing. Um, so the zero click or the one click, um, she wants to know if that is self-updating. Well, uh, it, it's a plain WordPress install. So once the zero click or indeed the one click has happened, it's a, it's a normal WordPress install, which these days is self-updating with uh, minor versions. So uh, if you have 4.1, it'll uh, move up to 4.1.1, for instance. But it's not going to move up to 4.2 or 5 when that comes around one day. Um, so it's it's self-updating in the same way that any WordPress installation would be. Maybe we should touch on the fact um, of the importance of updating and what can happen if you don't keep your theme and plugins up to date. Oh, bad things can happen. Um, you should definitely, definitely keep everything up to date with WordPress. With it being such a huge part of what's hosted on the internet these days, 20, 25% of sites that are hosted, it's a huge target for attackers. Um, it, there are new WordPress exploits all the time. Um, it, it's, I don't mean to scare people into not using it. Uh, if you keep your themes, your plugins, and WordPress up to date, you should find that everything's OK. Um, there are a couple of things you can do in addition to that. There are some security plugins. Um, your host is probably running uh, some kind of firewall or, um, or a web application firewall that's going to help out with that. Um, but it, you know, don't be scared of it. But absolutely, you should definitely keep things up to date, particularly with WordPress. Well, I think that's also true across pretty much any CMS that you're going to have, or any piece of software that you're going to have on your server, is making sure that things stay up to date. Because, like you said, you know, you're touching on security. Is uh, anybody who has some kind of a uh, content management system is extremely vulnerable. Um, there's cross-site scripting. Anything can happen, and there. People are trying to get in and exploit it for whatever purposes, whether because it's money or fame or just because they're a script kitty and they just want to have some fun. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. Um, there are there are attacks out there for certainly all the major CMSs uh, because they're such big targets. So they're, they're the things that people are going to want to attack. Uh, but uh, that said, um, if you keep things up to date and if the authors of whatever CMS you're using are on the ball, which the WordPress guys most definitely are, um, then uh, they'll, they'll be combating those pretty much as soon as the exploits are available. Um, but yeah, it, it's script kiddies. It's, uh, it's, sometimes it's targeted at the content of a site, um, but uh, these things happen. We see it literally every day, um, and we help our customers resolve that. Excellent. I had a little snafu and got kicked out of the Hangout. So. Yeah, welcome back, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... Yeah, I mean, so are there any specific ones that you would recommend as far as, you know, for people to use for security or SEO? Do you have a yeah. list of the ones that you love? Yeah, it, it, I mean, in reverse order, um, I mean, Yoast is, is super popular. It's one of sort of the top two plugins for SEO. Um, it's the one I use. I know it's the one my colleagues use. Um, so that's Y-O-A-S-T. Uh, the Yoast SEO plugin is, is really good for that. Um, that it does so much, it'll uh, advise you on the content of your posts, making sure you're putting the right keywords in. Uh, it's you know, it, it's a, a really, really functional and well-designed plugin. Um, so that's if, if you want an SEO plugin, that's the one I would recommend. The other one, which I don't know as much, um, is called All-in-One SEO. Um, you could try that out as well. Uh, that's the beauty of plugins. You can try one, you can turn it off, you can try another, you can flip back to the one you had before. Uh, it's, it's super easy to do. It's just uh, one click for each of the plugins to turn them on or off. But Yoast is the one I would recommend for SEO. Um, the, uh, a good security one is called uh, WordFence. Um, it does all sorts of things, uh, scanning a lot, of, uh, a lot of files in your, your hosting, your, your WordPress uh, installation uh, for various things. Um, it's, it's too much to go into, but um, it, it's a very popular plugin. It's, it's well uh, supported and well maintained. So that's worth checking out if you want to be on the good side of uh, security with your WordPress installation. And there's one other security one that I would recommend. And that's called Limit Login Attempts. Absolutely. Uh, and that one, because when people are trying to do what's called a brute force attack, 
and they're just trying to figure out your administration password, uh, you can use limit login attempts and basically say, well, after two login attempts that are failed, pause basically for X amount of time or block the IP completely. Um, and just uh, really quickly back on to what you're saying as far as the Yoast plugin and the all-in-one SEO plugin, um, I agree hands down. I've been using the Yoast plugin myself for quite a few years and I've used all-in-one SEO before that. Uh, nice thing about Yoast is, is that Yoast will actually import all those settings from all-in-one SEO. So if you were using all-in-one SEO, everything will still carry forward. And um, Yoast actually has a lot more support for like microdata and schema data. So it's it's pretty darn powerful. Absolutely. Ben, ben has a, a good background in SEO, as you can probably gather. Um, I, I dabble, <laughs> but, uh, but Ben knows that stuff more than I do. So we have a question here from Ronnie Bincer. He wants to know, how should we best keep track of plugins and their compatibility with the WordPress updates? Uh, hi, Ronnie. Good question. Um, to keeping track of them within your WordPress admin screen, uh, once you log in at uh, normally slash WP Dutch admin, um, there'll be a list of your plugins there, and it will show uh, the, uh, the version you're using and whether there's an update available for that. So you should find that WordPress will tell you. Um, you can always find uh, details of the compatibility and latest versions in the WordPress.org plugin directory, which is WordPress.org slash plugins, normally slash the name of your, uh, uh, your plugin. But you can always Google for that, of course. Um, and that will have the latest version, uh, what it's compatible with, um, a lot of reports of how many people have installed it. Uh, there's a compatibility checker there as well. You can put the version of WordPress you're running, uh, the version of the plugin, and there's a normally, hopefully, a nice big green bar that says works. Um, you can boast as well on that, so uh, share your experience with other people as well. It is a community, after all. Now, talking about compatibility, um, tomorrow is supposed to be the mobile apocalypse or mobile get-in, people are calling it, where Google is doing an update to their search, the mobile search, and sites that are not mobile-friendly um, might be completely gone from what I understand. Can you talk about that? Did 34SP, what did you guys do to prepare for this, and uh, what do you think is going to happen? Well, uh, I'm hoping, from our point of view, not a lot is going to happen. Um, we're, uh, we haven't done it on the back of this. Our, our own website um, and, and tools have been uh, mobile uh, ready, I guess, for, for a long time. We, we use them on mobiles. We, you know, we keep track of our analytics. We know how many people are using mobiles and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, for us, we're hoping not a lot's going to happen. Um, the, the big thing these days is responsive design. Um, a lot of themes, maybe most of the themes, certainly most of all the big themes, um, are designed responsively. So as you change the uh, browser size, whether it be uh, your desktop, uh, a tablet, or, or a phone, um, the design will change. Uh, things like words might drop from menus. They'll turn to icons. Uh, you might end up with uh, things organized vertically rather than horizontally. Um, but the theme will take care of all that for you, so long as you're using a responsive theme. Um, of course, it's, uh, as you say, a big day with Google changing anything. We all get a bit nervous around this kind of time. Um, we'll, we'll see where we end up in the rankings tomorrow. So there's something, actually, for everybody to kind of do their, to add to their to-do list for today, and that is, is go log into work, your WordPress at back end, check out what theme you have, and just double check. Make sure it's mobile responsive. And Absolutely. while you're in there, do all of your updates. <laughs> Absolutely. Christine could not be more right. Make sure your updates are done. Um, but uh, for checking uh, mobile responsiveness, uh, mobile, how it's going to appear on a mobile phone, if you have a responsive design, is so simple. All you have to do is change the size of your browser window. Um, you reduce it down to the size of a phone, and if your website looks all right, then you're doing fine. Um, if it doesn't, then maybe time to think about a new theme or, or maybe more drastic measures. But uh, that's just the easiest way of checking it. Now, what, what advice would you give to someone who doesn't do this and then come to find out later this week they've been totally dropped from search? What do they do? Well, um, it's uh, everyone's nightmare getting dropped out of the index. That's, uh, that's you know, a horrible, horrible thing to happen. Um, if uh, it does happen this week, and therefore you can be reasonably sure it's down to the, the mobile update, um, then uh, you can you can fix it. You can make sure your site is 
is mobile responsive. Change the browser window, get your phone out, get your tablet out, have a look, make sure it looks okay. Um, you don't need to try and game the system. Uh, Google really tries to look at these things as if it was a person. So if it looks all right to you looking at your website, it's going to look okay to Google. Um, that's probably the best advice I can give. Uh, I, I don't like things getting dropped out of Google, particularly my own things. It's very difficult to cope with. Um, but uh, fortunately, we haven't been affected too badly at any point. Our rankings change, of course. Uh, but yeah, if, if you get dropped uh, and you're happy doing it yourself, then yeah, just make sure you're still uh, responsive um, and you're not hosting anything dodgy or doing any kind of black hat SEO type things. Yeah, and you know, actually, I just for a point of clarity in there, because I, I don't want everybody to get too scared in the audience, and that is, is uh, just a fact, and that is, is with this mobile getting update, um, it's not necessarily something where you're going to get dropped out of search, like the index, like a panda or a penguin penalty. It's more of a situation where mobile-friendly pages on an individual page-by-page -page basis may rank better, basically, than other pages of similar type of quality. So it's very unlikely that you'll just be dropped out completely, but your pages might not rank personally where they do right now. And so that's the thing to watch out for. I like the idea of using it as an opportunity to rank higher rather than the threat of ranking lower. Good, good plan, man. Yes. <laughs> so um, you were just recently at WordCamp London, right? Yeah, we were there last month, I think about a month ago now. Um, we, were, we were down there. There's 600 people or so, um, some people from Automatic who are the guys behind WordPress. Um, people from all, all sorts of companies, uh, lots of sessions. It was a great event. So what, just really quickly, if you could, just give us kind of a high-level overview. Like, what is the, the mission statement of WordCamp, and um, why do you attend, and why should others maybe even pay attention to it? Because there's WordCamps all over the, the globe, right? Absolutely. There, there are WordCamps going on all the time. Um, there are some of the larger ones. London's a pretty big one, um, probably the second largest in Europe behind WordCamp Europe. Um, but they're all over the US, all over the world, in fact. Um, it's uh, a mission statement. I don't know that I know one, but it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, anyone using WordPress, interested in WordPress, who works with WordPress, uh, to get together and talk about WordPress. Um, you get some great presentations uh, from, from people that really know their stuff. Um, it's a good opportunity to network. Um, it's, they're, they're fantastic events. Um, you should, you should go along to one. If you've got one near you and, and you'll be able to find them, you should go along if you're at all interested. So it's not just for developers? It's for anyone who has a WordPress website? Absolutely. Um, it's, uh, it, I, I thought the same thing. The first one I went to, um, I thought maybe this is going to be too developer-focused. Uh, but that wasn't the case at all. Um, the organizers are, are great. And it's different people in, in all the cities, uh, but they're, they're uniformly great. Um, they can pitch it really well. So there are seriously techie sessions where people are diving right into the guts of writing plugins and speeding up the loop and all this sort of things. Um, and there are really high level things like how to work with syndicated content and uh, how you should attract readers to your blog, how you can do SEO. Um, it's, it's the full range of people. Um, and they're, they're normally one or two days, normally at a weekend. Um, and the one in London, at least, ran three tracks. So the whole time there were uh, three sessions on, um, spanning that range from super techie to maybe beginner or uh, designer or you know, user focused. Uh, but yeah, all the sessions to do, uh, you certainly should be intimidated by them being too technical. Um, the first one I went to, we didn't uh, really do much in the way of sponsorship or anything. I kind of went as an attendee. Uh, it was an absolute eye opener. So with um, with this work, Camp London, I mean, what would you say the the major top three takeaways that you came away with? Wow. Um, so we we were exhibiting at uh, at London. Um, we had uh, a lot of time talking to uh, existing customers. A lot of our customers were there, um, and potential customers. So what I took away is going to be. I'm afraid not that typical of a WordCamp. I actually didn't get to see uh, a lot of the sessions that I really wanted to. I didn't know how busy we were going to be. Um, but fortunately, uh, for a lot of WordCamps, WordCamp London included, um, all the sessions are uh, videoed, and they will appear on WordPress.tv. 
uh, where there's all sorts of useful things, lots of sessions from WordCamps around the world. The headline with things like uh, WordCamp Maui, which I was a little bit jealous I didn't get to go to. Um, but uh, WordCamp London will turn up there, I'm sure, in a, a week or two. OK, so you just said the golden word, Maui. Um, WordCamp, I use WordPress a lot. So yeah, I'm probably going to go to WordCamp Maui. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> No, but I mean, I think I think it's important for somebody to understand as a small business, as a business, just in general. If you have a WordCamp session that's going on near you, um, WordPress it it is your website basically. It's the mess, it's the second most important thing next to your domain name is your content management system. So if you need to understand anything, and that is as well, how does my content management system work? Security, SEO, all of these things are fundamental to our business's bottom line. So I guess the real takeaway there is, is if you have a WordCamp that's near you, take the time and go and basically go attend. Um, you'll be able to go and you'll be able to meet great vendors and you'll be able to also learn a lot of things and hopefully run your business just a little bit more efficiently. I would add, I would add to that that um, even if you have a webmaster running your website um, as a business owner, you still have a responsibility to have a basic understanding of your website and where it's hosted and how to get into it in the event that your webmaster leaves and you know so you definitely I think have to you can't just completely turn it over and rely on someone 100 percent you need a basic understanding of, of things like that wouldn't you agree? Uh, yeah definitely that, I think that's the case with so many things uh, it's easy to um, have someone else to outsource them, someone else can take care of them for you. But I think an understanding of how things are working is super important. Um, not just WordPress, not just hosting, but in every aspect of business. I think that's that's a really important thing to have. Um, and as, as Ben says, if there's a work camp near you, you can go there, you can understand a bit more. If you've got a question, ask. They're a friendly bunch of people. They're, uh, they'll be able to explain it in terms that you'll understand. Um, and if not, well, find another person. There were 600 people in London. I, you know, if I didn't like one person's answer, I could always go and find another. Absolutely. I want to do a couple shout-outs. Um, Susan David Cush Davis Cushing says she'll be under her desk during the mobile apocalypse. <laughs> and um, Sheila Hensley is in the audience. I wanted to say hi to her. Um, Andrew Hatchett, he said when we were talking about what do you do um, if you find out you've been dropped from the mobile search, he says you need to redesign, no other choice. Um, Roxanne Davenport's out there. Um, Ray Hiltz, he says keep your WordPress site updated. He learned that the hard way. And I think um, I would guess that a lot of people have learned that the hard way or will learn that the hard way. So talking about that, Daniel, what happens as a hosting provider if someone is not updating their WordPress site and they get hacked, what do you do about it? Oh, or do yeah. you do anything about it? Yeah, we, uh, we, first of all, we tell them that they really should have been updating their website. Um, no, we, uh, we can do all sorts of things. We can restore from backups. Uh, a lot of the times we can just remove the hack. Um, as I was saying before, we see it every day. Um, you know, lots of times every day. So uh, we're used to it. We know the hacks that come in. We know what to look for. Um, we can see when it's happening on our servers. Often it's not the customer reporting to us that uh, they've got a problem. We'll remove it before they get in touch because it'll start affecting our, our service. Um, so we, we get in there and fix it. Um, it's, it is super important to keep it updated. And I think uh, we, we probably all had a fairly similar experience. Um, and, and learned it the hard way, but yeah, keep keep it updated. Um, and if anything happens, get in touch with your host; they'll probably be able to help. You know, speaking of security and being hacked, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about just the the hosting environment itself, right? Because you've got shared, you've got VPS, you've got dedicated, and you've got managed type solutions. So, if I am on a three dollar a month account, um, how many other accounts? might be affected if I get hacked? That's a, a good question with uh, as many answers as a piece of string is long. Um, it's, uh, you might be lucky now for $3 a month, you're, you're not going to be on your own, uh, own system. That's just a, a simple matter, really. Um, so you might be sharing that system with maybe a 1,000 other people. 
Um, so if your site gets compromised, you might be affecting those thousand other people. Conversely, any of those thousand sites getting affected might affect you. Um, that's the, the kind of the risk reward for shared hosting. Um, if you're taking the risk of sharing your hosting with all those people and only having to pay three dollars a month for it, uh, then yeah, you're taking the risk that that's going to happen. Um, then you can move up the scale, as you mentioned, to uh, VPS or managed or dedicated. Um, and these are the uh, the kind of solutions where it's going to cost you a lot more money, but it's going to come with with some more benefits. Um, we we have managed VPS solutions that we absolutely recommend for people who have business critical sites or uh, anything they really care about, um, you know, the uptime and the availability. Of course, we do our best on our shared hosting as well, but just because it's shared hosting, we, we can't be as secure as we can on a, a, v, a VPS, a virtualized environment, where we're uh, dedicating the resources to that person and they can't be compromised by other people that we host. I think that's an important point, you know, that when people are trying to decide what type of web hosting, because I've used all of them. I've used free hosting. I've used shared hosting. I've had a managed dedicated host, and I think it depends on what you're trying to do. What is your, is this a business website? Is this a business critical website? Is this a play site? You know, if you're just playing around, you know, maybe, maybe you can get away with a free blogger or a free WordPress.com website. Um, but if you want to be taken a little more seriously, have more control, you know, but still want to keep costs low, and you know maybe a shared site is okay for you. Um, on the other hand, if you have a website that you must be up, must be secure 100% of the time, you know you're going to need to possibly, you know, move that pay scale up to go for that level of support um, that a managed server is going to provide. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right, and and it doesn't need to be a huge expense. Um, you know, a managed solution can be 10 or 20 bucks a month. Uh, it, it's not difficult uh, to, to move up that scale, but you're right, for a, a small personal project, you know, a Tumblr or a, a WordPress.com or a Blogger account, it can be absolutely fine. Um, I've got them myself. Um, but then you move up the scale and you maybe get a bit of shared hosting, and, and that's fine. Of course, I've got some of that as well. It's, that's kind of our bread and butter. We've got, you know, tens of thousands of people using it. Um, and then up to the sort of managed uh, managed things. I, I don't have anything that really warrants that. I know uh, some of my colleagues do. Um, so they host their, their sites on, on that kind of platform. Um, it's 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 horses for courses. You know, different things suit different people. Um, but for ten or twenty dollars, I mean, think of your business. If your business is out of action, uh, that's got to be worth ten dollars a month, twenty dollars a month. Absolutely. Um, we have a question from Bob Stossel Jr. Strassel Jr., sorry. He wants um, to know if you can talk about some common security errors that you see and provide recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've mentioned it a couple of times. The number one thing is keeping uh, your WordPress and plugins and themes up to date. Um, it's, it, it's, we've said it a few times because it is so important. And it's so simple as well. In theory, you log in, you hit the update button, uh, it'll give you, WordPress will give you a nice little badge when there's an update available. Um, and you click that, and everything's hunky dory. Um, it's it's sometimes not quite that simple, uh, but certainly that's the um, the idea of it. You should keep everything up to date, without exception. Um, some of the other things, uh, people choosing passwords that are far too simple it is a, an obvious one. You know, your password shouldn't be password. It should be nice and long. It should be something that only you know. It doesn't have to be crazy characters and exclamation marks and question marks and pound signs and everything else. It just has to be really long. That's uh, that's really what makes a password secure. Um, so get three or four words, put them together. Um, you know, you, you're going to have a really long password. That's going to be great, really good for not getting compromised. Um, you'll be able to remember it, um, and that'll keep a lot of uh, a lot of bad things at bay. I was reading an article the other day, actually, Daniel, and I'd love your thoughts on this. That was that uh, some of the most strongest and secure passwords that you can create is actually taking a phrase out of one of your favorite books and then just basically inserting, of course, you know, some capital, some numbers, etc. but something that you're going to always remember, but something that is phrased so long that any of the people that are out there that are trying to hack are not going to be able to get it with a regular dictionary type of attack or a brute force type of attack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, length is key. Um, we, we've ended up with this system where people think that exclamation marks and pound signs and tildes and all these characters are really 
really great ways of making your password secure. If you think about it, a computer that's trying to crack your password doesn't care if it's got a pound sign or if it's got a letter P. Um, if you remember a really long phrase, that's got a lot of things that could be different in it. And a computer doesn't understand a phrase. A phrase out of a book's ideal. That's something that you're going to be able to remember. Um, so yeah, a long password is great uh, and something you'll be able to remember. It doesn't need to have crazy characters. Yes, of course, you should have capitals and, and maybe a number or two. But you know, don't, don't go crazy with all the symbols. It doesn't aid in the security of your password. So let me see. Take away there. Take an entire paragraph from a book. Make that your password. It'll take about three million years to break that password, right? Absolutely. Maybe go down a little to a, a sentence, and then it'll be only a million years. <laughs> I want to do one shout out to Ronnie. Um, he's the Hangout Helper, um, my co-host, always testing things. He says just checking while live to see if the comments from YouTube show up anywhere. Hi. Hey, Ronnie. We'll see you again next month for our next TNT. And we only have a couple minutes left, so I wanted, I know that you are launching a new um, um, program for developers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we have, uh, our reseller platform is coming out uh, any day now. Um, we've had it in beta, or beta I should say, for a couple of months now. Um, everything's gone really well. Um, we're about done with that, um, and we'll be launching that in the next week or two. Um, it's a platform that allows people to host 30 websites for $29.95 uh, pounds a month. Um, I forget the dollar price, forgive me. Um, but uh, we, we've seen that uh, be really popular with people uh, when we were talking to them at WordCamp London. Uh, that seemed, we didn't really go there with the idea of selling that, but everyone wanted to talk about it. Um, so that's a platform we're really pleased with. It uh, comes pre-installed with Plus 12. Uh, that has the WordPress toolkit in it, which is uh, one-click installers uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so we're, we're really looking forward to that coming out in the next couple of days. Awesome. So um, call to action. I think, um, well, I'm going to say if, if you guys, you know, now we've, we've covered in the past boot camps, we've covered Blogger, um, we've covered um, WordPress. We had Carolyn Compern um, do her 365-day blogging challenge. If any of you are not yet blogging or don't have a website, there's no more excuses. Um, you can either go sign up for a free one at Blogger or or WordPress.com if you just want to play around. Um, if you want something more serious, you know, and you're ready, um, I recommend 34SP as um, do their one-click install. Um, they're great people. Ben and I know them, and um, I think, um, and especially if you're interested in reselling, you know, you could, you know, for 29.95 pounds a month. I have no idea either, but um, it doesn't. I don't think it's that much difference. Um, you can start reselling hosting as well. Absolutely, and and beyond the reselling, uh, you know, if you've just got a lot of sites you want to host, it's a, a fairly economical way of doing that. Certainly, a lot of our users are either you know web designers who have a few clients and they take care of the hosting as well, or just people who've got several sites. Uh, it, it's a really good solution for all those folks. You know, I think one other thing that we do need to to mention is is that um, you recently put up a. a tutorial series actually from Chris Jenkins here on the plus is writing for you about material design and WordPress and kind of how to integrate that into your themes right uh, he is uh, I'm not a designer so uh, I, I read his uh, his tutorials and uh, they're really well written but uh, in all honesty it goes slightly over my head um, if it comes to any kind of design uh, I, I pass that on to other people I don't have a flair for it at all right on and I mean, that's one of the great things about WordPress, you know, is you no longer have to be a designer to, you know, have a website if you pick the right theme. And that's absolutely right. Yeah, just find a theme you like the look of, uh, and, and the look will be taken care of for you. Um, you. You can tweak it a little bit. You can change the colors. You can move things around. You can add uh, widgets, which are, are small, uh, like, plugins that appear on, on your site as opposed to plugins that do things in the back end of your site. Um, you, you can have all these things make it look exactly how you want, and you don't need the design skills to do it. Awesome. Do you have anything else to add, Ben? Yeah, I guess the, the only thing I, I would add is, is from an SEO perspective is that, you know, we've already talked about Yoast. We've talked about security. Um, we've talked a little bit about speed, you know, the difference between, say, shared and VPS, dedicated and managed. Um, VPS and higher is really great when it comes to speed. 
So if you're thinking about trying to get a little bit of an extra kind of bump in your in your search rankings, we know that speed is one of those things. So you might want to look beyond the cost of just shared and kind of move up just a little bit higher. Security, I think we've covered that kind of to death at this point, so I think there's some great takeaways there. Um, one thing I would recommend is, is be wary of plugins. Definitely check out the reviews. Definitely check out how up to date it is. Because you know, one thing with WordPress is, is you can get plugin bloat, and plugin bloat will basically slow down your WordPress installation big time. So it's a good idea to to kind of keep an eye on the different plugins that you have, and do you really need them? Um, is I think the the biggest takeaway there. Wouldn't you agree, Daniel? Absolutely, that's really good advice. Um, we see people with uh, hundreds of plugins installed. I, I read somewhere that the average was about 25 plugins active. Um, if you think about it, do you really need the functionality of all those plugins? Uh, Ben's absolutely right. It's just going to slow the site down, um, which is going to hurt Google rankings, and it opens it up to potentially uh, security issues. So if you're not using a plugin, at the very least deactivate it um, or uninstall it if you're just never going to use it again. Awesome. And uh, one thing Ronnie Benzer says, his important takeaway from today, longer passwords are better. <laughs> and Daniel, I think you did wonderful. I'm very impressed with uh, your first Hangout appearance. And uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> good luck to you. And everybody else, we'll see you again on TNT Bootcamp the third Monday of next month. Thanks, and have a great day. <laughs>